Live, available on the BBC Sounds app with Stephen Nolan. No, 118 flood warnings are in force across the country tonight as rain continues on already sodden ground. People who have been stranded in cars and homes in North Wales and on the Yorkshire Dales have been rescued by firefighters. As stories like this become the winter norm, is enough being done? to try to prevent flooding and help those places hardest hit by the storms. Dr George Heritage is the director of the AQUOS team uh, at the University of Salford and an expert on river systems and their uh, management. Good evening to you, George. Good evening, Stephen. Good evening. So is enough being done, George? What's the state of play? Well, uh, I I think we have to be um, fair with uh, the the university, uh, sorry, with the environment agency and with government, etc. at the moment. They are doing uh, a great deal. Um, A lot of the defences that we have uh, in this country are are standing up uh, very well to the um, pretty extreme conditions that we have at the moment. It doesn't feel like it. it, I'm sure it doesn't, certainly to those people that that, um, have suffered flooding. But um, we we must also remember that um, there are a very, very large number of communities, a large number of cities and towns that have actually survived um, the, the the two storms that have come through so far. And the river systems that we that we have, what type of flood defences are we putting in? Well, we, we've got we've got physical defences um, in in our towns and cities, and um, they, they 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 build up the capacity of the channel through those areas, and um, you know by and large uh, work very well for most floods. And on, on top of that, there's uh, a lot of initiatives now um, higher up in the catchment where um, the the rainfall is being slowed down or captured within um, the floodplain, which previously was was um, uh, blocked off, uh, so that we we see that um, those big floods aren't coming through as quickly to the towns and cities, and you know. Uh, as a combination of, of um, influence, they are slowing and stopping some of that water and, as a result, reducing the flooding in the towns. And there is this conundrum, uh, George, isn't there, between the demand for housing and therefore pressure on councils to make land available for homes and, and, and then them not building too close to rivers and, and, and that tension that there's always going to be between planning and affordable housing? Yes, there, there, there definitely is, Stephen. And, and I think, um, you know, we, we, we have to recognise that uh, in the past we've, we've certainly built on uh, very much flood-prone areas. We've got, we've got um, a, lot of, a lot of protocols, a lot of legislation uh, in place now, though, which... Um, is, is, is quite stringently applied and it does stop uh, a lot of, um, you know, certainly cavalier building on, on flood-prone areas. Uh, but you, we must also um, recognise that uh, those people making those decisions have, have multiple uh, pressures on them, not, not just flooding, in terms of providing houses for people into the future. So there is a balance that, that sometimes is struck and sometimes the, the decisions that are make uh, end up being wrong and some places do get flooded. Cheryl Tyler is listening to this. Cheryl's the chairman of Save Murfield, a large community group in the town of Murfield, which lies on the River Calder in West Yorkshire. Hello, Cheryl. Hello, good evening. Uh, hi, good, good evening to you. So the Calder has a warning on it, doesn't it? Yeah. Yes, it does, yes. Um, and um, if I could just explain where Murfield is, would that be all right? Just yes, because to... I haven't a clue. <laughs> uh, well, Murfield's a, a town of approximately 20,000 people. It's sandwiched between Dewsbury in the east and Huddersfield to the west. Um, we're downriver, um, because the Calder runs through, you will have heard of Hebden Bridge and Mytham Royd. Um, the Calder runs down to Murfield, and um, we have a problem with flooding Uh, around the river area. Um, One of the things that worries us is if reports are true that one in ten houses are being built on floodplains and in flood risk areas, um, uh, why are we building there? Now, I understand what the pressures are on housing, um, but um, the 
the problem that we've got in Murfield at the moment is that Kirklees have uh, a local plan which was ratified last February and uh, their housing target is 31,000 over a period of 15 years. But in December of last year, approval was given for 67 houses to be built on an ancient floodplain in Granny Lane in Murfield. Um, the actual site is about 50 yards from the edge of the River Calder. It floods regularly. We used to talk about one in a hundred years exceptional events, but that's no longer a realistic view of what's happening on the ground. Um, they had major flooding on Boxing Day in 2015, and each year there's been significant flooding. And, of course, Storm Kiera was another major incident. So what's the solution? Well, um, there are two, two problems here. Number one is... As a result of some of the work that's going on in Mytham Royd and in um, Hebden Bridge, the problem's being shifted downriver. But the solution is simply not to build where places flood. Uh, um, the people that live there already, and there is a small community there, um, they already have to put up with flooding. They have to put up with the fact that on numerous occasions over the year, they can't access their houses. Um, in, when Storm Kiera was here, the, the road was about four foot deep in water. The floodplain there is uh, an interesting situation because it acts as a natural soak away from water that comes down the hillsides behind, behind us. Um, so on occasions, that floods and so does the river. So you can imagine what sort of devastation occurs. And yet there's plans to build 67 houses in that place which seems to us absolutely nonsensical but how will those houses sell will people not have a heads up will there not be talk around the area well steve you know that um when uh, um, developers put out their marketing materials it's not the first thing on the list this area floods is it um and if somebody was to go down there on a beautiful sunny day they wouldn't necessarily be aware that they probably won't get um insurance um, most of the people that live in that area can't get insurance. Um, if I could t just tell you that the piece of land belongs to a place called Sheep Ings Farm. Now, Ings is a Norse word, an old Norse word, that means water meadow. And the area surrounding this uh, field is called um, Gregory Springs. So I think you can probably get the picture. It's all to do with water. It plays a very prominent role in this area. Dr Jonathan Sims listening to this. Jonathan's the Chief Technical Director for Resilience at HR Wallingford. It's a company that specialises in large-scale civil engineering projects. Hello, Jonathan. Hello. Hello nice there. Nice to be on the programme with you, Stephen. Nice to talk to you. So this question comes up time and time again, doesn't it? Does dredging rivers help? Um, well, dredging is one of those things that you know as engineers we may need we may be asked to do in order to improve the conveyance the, the amount of water that can go down a river channel um and you know that is one of the measures that we need to keep in our portfolio of actions um you know i'm, I'm speaking as an engineer in, in that kind of situation trying to find the the, the technical solutions, as it were, to these flooding problems. So how can we engineer in more water-carrying capacity to our rivers and catchments? What can we do? Um, well, in terms of uh, uh, the kind of solutions that you know, you know engineers could come up with in this situation, a key feature is actually making what's called making space for water. So you need to provide enough space to either store the water upstream of urban areas or to, um, uh, you know, make sure that the defences aren't squashed too close to the river uh, in order to allow the, the water to actually come through. And none of this is cheap? None of this is cheap, no. Um, the, the government is currently spending about... Eight hundred million pounds a year, on average, um, on on flood defences and and the other kind of works that we do in in flood risk management. 
Jonathan, Jonathan, thank you. Dr George Hardy, just a, a final word um, f- from you. Can we expect this situation to get worse over the coming years? I, I, I think um, there, there's a number of uh, studies that have looked into um, the way that uh, our weather is changing and uh, they are pointing to uh, the, the sort of situations that we've had over this last month um, becoming more frequent. We will see uh, more storms coming in with uh, affecting larger areas of the country and those storms are bringing actually more water from a, a, a warmer Atlantic. So, yeah, I, I, I think we've, we've got to um, certainly face up to this, uh, the prospect of more flooding into the future. But I think we are, at the same time, um, trying very hard um, on a number of fronts to, to combat that. Thank you very much, George, Cheryl and Jonathan. Thank you. OK, it's 13 minutes now to 10, 0885 909 693. Let's get more on our phone-in tonight. We're talking about the Ranner boss, Michael...